Thank you very much from Minnesota. With me, I'm holding uh, an identity card that is uh, lost and found. Frederick Okari Morembe. Frederick Okari Morembe. Please, in a good on a potato. So make sure you make sure. It's, it's the psych. Then you remember, no, no, let me start from behind. Hey, DJ, nip a track, nip a track. Okay. You know, let's like, just go to the car. Cut, 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 cut. DJ, nip a track.
Ladies and gentlemen, so you all be upstanding. Ladies and gentlemen, so you all be upstanding for his excellency. Give it up for Mombia. Give it up for Mombia. Our DJ, please prepare the playback for the national anthem as we get ready for the final and the third day of the Kissy Entrepreneurship Summit. guests to the seats at the front so that we can be able to start the official program of the third day and the final day of the Kisi Entrepreneurship Summit. My name is Walter Mogare, together with my brother, Lovely people, Sergio. We will be taking you through the program today and we're glad you're here. May we now be upstanding for the national anthem. DJ Playback.
that big row over there, I see our own, our own Joshua Oigara. Joshua Oigara, please stand up so they can see you. Joshua Oigara is our son. And he's there. So I tell His Excellency Governor Kabogo, Mumu Musalimia. Sawa Sawa. Munampenda. Sana. Ah, and Meskia Yo Sawitin Tamambia. As the reason we are here is to look at entrepreneurship. And when we look at our counties, we look at Kiambu, we look at Kisi, we know that we are predominantly an agricultural economy. In this economy, we have spent for the last 50 years been selling products mainly without any further processing. Today we have uh, giants in industry who have worked to start creating the manufacturing processes that will add value. This is not sufficient. We would like to have more value addition of our products as we continue. So this is an event that is welcoming each one of us here to become a manufacturer. If you grow bananas, instead of just ripening them and eating ripe bananas in the market, we would like to get banana powder, banana starch, and other banana products that have much higher value than ripe bananas. In Kiambu, as here, we grow bananas. You have more bananas that, than we do. So we need to work together and make sure that we have those industries. Another area that we cover together is dairy. We have a very thriving dairy industry in Kiambu County. And I'd like to invite Kisi farmers to come and exchange ideas with the people in Kiambu so that we can increase our yield of milk and make our dairy industry here to grow. The reason we are here is because we are all one. Your success is our success. Kiambu's success is the success of the country. From Kiambu to Kisi to Kisumu to everywhere, we are one country. And we all need to work very hard to grow our country. So I wish you... A Kenya and but also others, uh, your markets. Germany and Kenya have worked a very, very long time together, especially also here in Kisi County, in Kisumu County, but more in the field of development cooperation. And I think from seeing what is happening here and about the entrepreneurial spirit that is here, I think it's high time that we start also to find market for German products here, but also to bring German know-how into Kisi County. And I can... I will bring this message home with me to Nairobi to talk to the German uh, entrepreneurship there, the business community of Germany, and tell them that here they find a very high entrepreneurial spirit and that it's worthwhile looking here for products, for all the opportunities, and also for bringing maybe German technology even to Kisi. That might be good. And also, if German companies come, uh, they are always there to stay. They have a whole kind of program, not only of producing and selling products, but also of training their employees, of looking after them, and to see to it that uh, training and uh, skilled workers will be the future, not only of German companies, but also of this country. So I thank you all very much. I take the message home and I wish all of you a very, very good day and a very good event. And congratulations once again to the organizers of this entrepreneurial summit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, the Ambassador Chairman. 
Yeah. QC County did agree, but you do recall, see, as when I came to your office, we were all aware about his other responsibilities outside the country. And so, please, when you go back, send the best wishes of the people of Kisi County and tell him that they are waiting for him with open arms. So please send our best wishes to His Excellency the President and please tell him that we will be waiting for him for him to come to Kisi and when he's ready we will be there waiting for him. Ladies and gentlemen, I do not want to bore you with any details. Captains of Industry Vimal, for you to get out of your desk, for Joshua Igara to get out of his desk, for Chepuponi to get out of his, his desk, for Mohamed Nyauga, who is a chairman of all the notes that you are, coming in your, you are carrying in your pockets, to get out of his office, it means great to this county. It means that you have people at heart. It means that you would want to see the whole of Kenya develop in equal manner. And it means that you want resources dispersed from Nairobi to us. Sometimes we say we are in the backwaters of this country. We sincerely thank you. Let me also thank the Nation Media Group, Standard, Citizen, Minto, Egesa, and all the media groups, Star Newspapers, the people, and all the media houses that have covered us and have done us proud. For Joshua, the support you have given us is invaluable. CPF, the support you have given us is invaluable. KEPSA, the support you have given us in terms of institutionalizing a conference, and our conference should be done, is completely invaluable. Can invest, as happens in all the other counties, but I must say that we have come off edge. We have put a number of measures in place in health services, which I don't want to repeat here because they were said on Monday. We have done quite a lot on infrastructure. Our own town here in Kisi is a 24-hour economy with over 360 solar-powered street lights, and we have also installed solar in 52 other markets across the county. But what brought us here is in the area, Kisi County has a population which is oscillating around 1.5 million. We have the highest concentrations of people. We have about 950 people per square kilometer. The national average is 66 people. When the Secretary General of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, His Excellency Mukisa Kitui was here, he said that the whole of Kisi is actually a metropolitan area because the UN de definition of a metropolitan is 650 people per square kilometer. So he told us we do not have Kiruro Kisi because the whole area is metropolitan. The beauty of that is that we have a ready market. The governor of Central Bank is here. Statistics from your office in Kisumu indicate that Kisi County controls about 60% of the money market in the Nyanza region. For those of you who are investing, you are coming to a country where people appreciate money, and the captains of industry will tell you that money follows money. So please, as you've come here, Vimal, I showed you the granite uh, carving. It was done in only three weeks. I don't know whether Elkana Ongesa is here. He did that granite uh, carving in three weeks. But it's not the carving that I want to tell you about. It is the granite. And you assured me that granite is in high demand and that you are going to ensure that an industry on granite comes here. I thank you, sir. And the Kisi people will be very happy if that happens. We also have the only soapstone in Eastern Central Africa. 
It's a soft stone, and that stone can be used for making, uh, for, for making talc, chalk, paint, ceramics, and it is also an additive in manufacturing, especially of pharmaceuticals. All we need is somebody, an investor who is going to ensure that we don't only use it for figurines, and that we don't use its waste for putting it on the road as maram. Because we are wasting a natural resource. So we are asking the captains of industry to help this nascent county to ensure that its major product is actually value added. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Kirubi, I showed you coffee that we want to blend so that we have Kisi coffee. And I want to tell you that we are the only county in Kenya that has a coffee variety called Blue Mountain. Blue Mountain coffee is high grade, high level coffee that is used for blending. Here we call it Omosike. If you find it without it being mixed with any other coffee, it will smell to high heaven. So we're asking the captains of industry, can you help us so that this coffee of ours is not mixed with bad coffees from other areas so that it can actually be blended as Kisi coffee and we see it in London, we see it in New York, we see it in all these places. Our brothers and sisters will then benefit from it. Let me not bore you with a lot of details, but let me tell you that you are all welcome to Kisi. Kisis are welcoming. We have all ethnic units here. The economy of Kisi is run by all Kenyans. And that is a fact, that's 100% fact. And here in Kisi, all of them are Kisis. This conference, we work together with the members of the Asian community, members of, uh, from Central Province, members from Northeastern Province. They were all involved here as part of the public-private partnership arrangements that we have put in place in Kisi County. So ladies and gentlemen, let me ask our brothers and sisters, those in the local diaspora, those who have invested in Kericho, in Nakuru, in Nairobi, in Eldoret, who are from Kisi, please come home. Kisi has changed. I know that you are watching us all the way from Minnesota, from Dallas, in Texas, from Houston and all those areas. For those of you who are watching us and you come from this county, when you come back home, don't go and invest in Nairobi. Please come home and invest in Kisi County. My brothers and sisters, the captains of industry, John Simba, Mohamed Nyaoga, Joshua Igara, I know that you have invested. Please come back home and invest here at home. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you sincerely. It's now my privilege and honor to share a man who is an industrialist himself, a man who was a CEO of Barclays Bank, I think in East and Central Africa before he became a CS, a man who knows the industry, and a man who knows the smell of money. Please come and talk to us, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, a fair bit of my statement in addressing this subject of entrepreneurship, which I am sure you will hear more from some of the other panelists that would be coming up here later on. <coughs> Two of the biggest global challenges that we face in the world today is around unemployment and poverty. And both of those are very, very closely related. And whilst many governments and businesses in, the, in each of these countries 
have devised plans on how to deal with these challenges, especially on unemployment. One of the most proven long-term sustainable solution in dealing with this is through entrepreneurship, through people starting their businesses, through people employing others in order to make a living. And I'm really pleased that the theme of what Kisi County have chosen is this very important subject that would help not only here, but our country as a whole. Ladies and gentlemen, as a government, we have taken note of the need to build entrepreneurship and the key objective that we have put out there in dealing with entrepreneurship challenges is to improve our competitiveness as a country. In order to improve our competitiveness, the government has picked up two broad areas that we should be working on to make sure that the private sector thrives in our country, but also becomes a very big attraction to new potential investors, be they local or foreign. The first broad area is to really work hard as a country to reduce the overall cost of doing business in our country. Many people come here and find it expensive in many ways whether it's the cost of transporting something from Kisi town to Kisumu or to Nairobi or to Mombasa, whether it is the issue of telecommunication, whether it's all other charges that happens in our country, the overall cost of operating a business in this country must come down to a much lower level than they have been. And a key plank of that strategy has been geared towards building infrastructure as one of the most enabling factors of actually reducing the cost. And so without going into a lot of details, the government has made significant improvements in our activities at the port of Mombasa, which is where many countries in the region and our own country do a lot of activities through. Not only is the capacity of the port improved, but a lot of improvements in the efficiency has taken place. You're all aware of the railway that is being built from Mombasa, eventually terminating in Rwanda, through basically Uganda, that is going to transform the logistics activities of our country. The energy sector, road sector, are all other areas where a significant amount of government activities are being uh, deployed. The second major area that we're focusing on is to really improve the business environment. Moving away from some of the expensive things that requires a lot of capital in order to be spent, we also want to deal with some of the softer issues that contribute to the difficulty of doing business in our environment. So for example, if you are in Kisipan and you want to register a business, we would like people to be able to do that out of Kisi town without necessarily going to Nairobi. If you want to transfer your property, as opposed to it taking nearly three months plus to actually transfer your plot from one person to the other, we would like to be able to do that in weeks as opposed to months. If you want to do many other things that requires government intervention, we want to see how we can actually improve those processes. And as part of that exercise that we embarked on a couple of years ago, last year, Kenya was ranked the third most improved economy in terms of improving its business environment in the whole world. And it's an achievement that I think we should all be very proud of as Kenyans. And risk we don't take for granted and is a reflection of some of the things that has happened and those that are also in the pipeline. Having said that, I think one of the biggest challenges that we have in dealing with our competitiveness issues are policies that are managed at county levels today in our country. And today, if you want to operate in one county but want to sell your goods in another county, 
the number of charges and levies that are imposed are becoming not only exorbitant, but becoming significant put off to a number of businesses that are able to operate. Between here, if somebody wants to do business out of Kisita and want to sell that product in Mombasa, you will have to go through 10 other counties at least. And each of those counties would like to levy some charge or another. And I think Kenya being an amalgamation of our counties can never become competitive if our respective individual counties continue to impose some of these charges. So we would like to appeal to the county governments to hear the private sector out, to make sure that what they do as the local governments in their respective counties has been reported to have significant negative impact in the overall doing business here in Kenya. I do recall about a year ago, a company that is operating on Kericho and drawing its raw material out of Homabe. And one of the counties said, well, you can't do this. You either have to pull your factory onto Homa Bay side or you stop drawing our raw materials. I mean, this is one country and we really would like to make sure that we can change that perception in dealing with some of these specific charges that are being imposed. Ladies and gentlemen, small and medium sized, that we are so dependent on as a country, I hear four key themes that cut across in terms of the challenges that these businesses are facing. The first one is people say, where is the opportunity? And if you look around and if you look at businesses that have been started by Kenyans, including those that have now become global businesses, I can say to you, there are a significant number of opportunities that do exist in our country our Kenyan people are very entrepreneurial and just walking through the demonstration, the presentations that were done there, I've seen quite a number of things, whether it's value addition in the bananas or a gentleman who was building a station of dealing with lightning in this particular region. So the opportunities are there. What I think we are lacking are the three other key themes that have been raised as an issue. And so the second of those issues is now the skills. Do we have the skills to enable actually businesses to thrive and to grow? And I can tell you that between the private sector and government, a lot of focus and attention is being paid in building capacity and training our people so that they can be good for business, either for their own businesses, but also to be able to work for other companies. So the government, for example, is working very hard in building technical vocational training institutes across many counties in the country. And I know that our university education curriculum is being reviewed with a view to making it much more relevant to the needs of the business community as opposed to many of our people studying social sciences and arts. And very, very small amount of engineering or technical subjects that are so important for our industrialization in the country. I also would like to commend the private sector for taking the initiative in training a lot of our young people as a way of preparing them for their future and the commitment of 30,000 interns that private sector has given is something that we would like to see grow year in, year out. The third area is on the issue of access to market. People can produce, they have the idea, they've got a few people who can do the work for them, but where do they sell their products? And that is a major challenge that people have complained about. And in fulfilling that need, the government has made a commitment, as many of you would have heard and known, to avail 30% of government procurement to the small and medium-sized businesses that are represented by youth, women, and disabled people. The value of that 30% is in the region of 200 billion Kenya shillings that are today dedicated in serving as a market access issue 
for the small and medium-sized businesses. We do know that this process has not been as smooth as it ought to be, but we've got to continue to build and improve on it year in, year out. But that is an offer that is there. That is an opportunity that we see a lot of young men and women making demands in actually getting a bigger share of this big opportunity within our own country. To our international investors who are looking at Kenya as a possible destination for investment, our market size is not only 40 million people that we have in Kenya, but our market size is potentially a billion people in the world that are out there representing countries with whom we have agreements with where we have duty-free, quota-free access to access those markets. So if you look at within East Africa, for example, you've got over 150 million people. No duties, no restriction on quotas. If you look at Comesa, the common market for Western and Southern Africa, 18 countries, 400 million people, potentially you can sell into those markets without any problem. And if you look at the EU, big as it is, we're just concluding an agreement that would make sure that we have that arrangement in place. And of course, through the AGOA program, the US has made it possible for sub-Saharan African countries, including our own, to be able to sell over 6,000 goods into the US market without any duty. So we are the place in working to make sure that the cost of doing business is lowered, business environment is improved, and the market access is actually there. So whether you are operating in Europe or operating in Nairobi or any part of the country, you are as good as having one market. And so we will continue to build on that opportunity for all our investors, be they local uh, or international. Ladies and gentlemen, before I do that, there's the issue of capital that people have complained about as lack of access to capital and where it's available capital is very expensive and I really would like to appeal to the commercial banks especially those that are represented here to make sure that the current level of interest rates that our small and medium-sized businesses are being charged will never be sustainable and I'm pleased that we have started a dialogue with the banking sector in finding a way of making sure that as interest rates are reduced the system also improves the way of minimizing the risks that commercial banks are likely to face. But today we see a number of private equity funds that are coming into our region to provide equity capital in actually supporting people with excellent ideas in moving forward. One of the other key things that we have seen as success, especially for the small businesses in our country has been the linkage between big business and small businesses and a number of corporates including those that are represented here have demonstrated that if a big business supports small businesses not necessarily doing them a favor but through the supply chain are able to support them we have seen those businesses start a better chance of success than those that are trying to do things by themselves and would like to appeal to the private sector to continue to support these small businesses because every big business today starts a small one day and these are the future businesses that would be helping our country to do so many things uh, that we need to. Having said that, we are aware that there are some specific cases, especially the big retail outlets we have in our country that have really been challenged by the small businesses as not providing that support directly, especially as it relates to issues about payment terms. A small business that supplies a big retail outlet would love to be paid their money within maximum 90 days. Today we hear people not having been paid for 180 days. And because of the big buying power these small businesses are getting extremely disadvantaged. And I would like to challenge everybody who is doing business in our country to make sure that 
we don't abuse our dominant position, make sure we do businesses fairly, and build a very, very fair and open trading practices in our country that we make sure everybody benefits all along. Now, let me come back closer to home in Kisi County. One of the things that we would expect as we look out for investors, as we market Kenya as an investment destination, one of the first group of investors that we would like to see invest in any county, first of all, are the locals. That is because locals understand the dynamics better, they know customers better, they know what needs to be done, and the nuances of doing businesses in this particular part of the country. And so I'd like to appeal to the locals, as has been already uh, prompted, I would say, by the governor, that we encourage people who are from this region to invest here, others would then follow. It's a leadership by example that we really would like to see. The second bit is the market for people who invest here can only be provided to a large extent by the county government in addition, of course, to the population that is here. And I'd like to appeal to county governments all across the country to make sure that we give priority to products that are produced in our country, maybe beginning with those that are manufactured in your own county. And that, I think, is very important. No need for you to buy stationery from somebody who is providing this in Mombasa when you can support somebody who is in Kisi County. That is how they start business. That is how they are going to thrive. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, I would like to say that in our effort to make sure that Kenya becomes a business-friendly environment, that we build collectively between government and private sector a very business-friendly business country. We have dialogues with the private sector on a monthly basis with all ministries in the country to deal with issues that are specific to each of the ministries that the private sector is facing. That dialogue has worked extremely well. Every six months, issues that cannot be resolved within those dialogues are escalated to the president and cabinet through a presidential roundtable, and those engagements have proven to be extremely useful, and we're very, very pleased and excited that as a country, there's nothing that is hidden. Everybody puts their issues on the table. And whilst we've got a few challenges, including those that have been highlighted in the headlines of some of the newspapers this morning, I think we should not give up. We continue to build on the successes that we have, and very soon we'll get there. And I can com commit to you that we have very, very clear direction from His Excellency the President that we need to be bold, to be competitive, and not only look in our region, but be one of the best in the world. So all the investors, be they local or international, Kenya is open for business. And to the Kisi County, good luck, and well done for putting such a wonderful show. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much, thank you very much, CS. Uh, before we go to the next program, I'll hand over to Nyambane for, so that the CS can be able to see what's produced in Kisi. I hope you're doing that quick. As Governor Mohamed Nyaoga is a chairman, we may have referred to, Cis, uh, to Carol Karaoke as Sisley. She is Carol Karaoke. Those apologies, I hope they are accepted. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. A round of applause, please. We will give you this just as appreciation for you being with us for the second day running. Begin my coffee to that. Ladies and gentlemen, I also want a special recognition to give uh, this uh, elephant made uh, right from Kisi. As you know, Kisi is rich uh, in soft stone, mining industry. That's the product you get uh, from Kisi. Madame Ute France, of, of, of course, ambassador of, of Germany. I want to recognize also we have the former ambassador of uh, Germany, Ambassador Sinde, who's right there. Thank you so much for gracing us uh, with your presence and also spelling out 
uh, Germany. Germany is ready to do business with uh, Kisi County. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Moving on, and of course, look what Kisi County can produce. Ladies and gentlemen, before you is a vase that has been prepared by the diverse talent of Kisi County. One of the things, Your Excellency, that we must say about that artwork, that soapstone is not a stone, it's actually a mineral. So that is an artistic impression made from the mineral that is only found in Kisi County that we will present to our chief guest, C.S. Tafadali. The moment is yours for you to receive your present from us. We are not so sure whether we will be able to wear that, but uh, <laughs> C.S., thank you very much. Governor. Governor, before, before you sit, sir, we, Governor, before you sit, we realize that you've been appreciating everybody and we have not appreciated you. So there's a wonderful small girl who brought something for you just to keep you smiling. Can I have the little angel coming here so that we can present this gift coming to right our up. Governor who has been giving others gifts? But we never a got a surprise to. gift uh, to His Excellency the Governor uh, James Songwai for hosting us in his official occasion. This is the point where now he you unveils. Can show, you can show us the present. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, when the Pope was here, the Governor himself made a point of welcoming the Pope to Kenya and to Kisi. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. That is yours. Uh, thank you very uh, much, my MC Nyambane. This is the point where we give a round of applause and appreciate our guests as they take their seats and moving on to um, the next panel discussion. Nyambane, as we rightfully put it, um, we're looking at some of the